So when it comes to editing fixtures, sometimes it's easy just to take a whole bunch of fixtures in one go and edit them all at once. Um, but if you want to be really precise and you want to save a thing in a tabulated format, that's why we do things in the spreadsheet view. It really is just a personality thing. Uh, I quite like tables. I love seeing things laid out in lists. It's really obvious when something's missing because you can look down a list and see something that looks inconsistent just visually. You, know, you can see a number that's got an extra decimal point in it or it's maybe got the wrong, uh, the wrong letter at the beginning of it. You can just see it all very clearly. So putting things in tables, just a way to be a little bit OCD about how you label things and how you make sure everything's listed and grouped correctly. Uh, if your lighting is quite un, you know, unordered in that way, uh, the, just the lighting design, the way that you structure everything is quite um, uh, individual. There's not a lot of consistency between groups. Then probably the best way is to work in the CAD mode. I really don't want to say what's best for you, um, but this is how I work, as I keep saying. Uh, I'll draw things in CAD mode. I'll give them a spot number in um, in, the in, in the CAD mode using the quick tools, and then I jump across to the data mode and I'll manually input the patch because I'm usually given the patch by somebody, somebody else. It's just much easier to work down the list and copy than to try to find all the lights in the plan and use the quick tools, jumping in and out of booms, thinking about when you miss a, a channel number or your patch has to change, you have to update the quick tools menu. So I've just given you the way that works best for me and the type of productions I'm doing. But I work mainly in theatre. Uh, if you're doing a lot of arenas and concerts, then it could be much easier for you just to bash out the patch in WYSIWYG using the quick tools and give somebody else the patch that you've created. So up to you. But we're going to crack in now and have a look at uh, the spreadsheet mode in a bit more detail, look at how we can edit all of the, all the details in there. Lesson 31, we're just going to um, go over how we can use the spreadsheet mode to, to work on our lighting rig. Um, if you're a bit, uh, you know, if you're an organized person, or I feel myself as an organized person, uh, I actually prefer the spreadsheet view for seeing what's going on. I can um, I can see quite easily. I've got 26 degrees source fours and 10 degrees source fours. If something was was incorrect, I could easily um, do something about it because I can I can I can see that it's standing out in a group. It's it's quite obvious to me when something doesn't fit that pattern. Um, so the first thing I would always do when I was coming into spreadsheet mode for the first time, assuming that I've put all the spot values in, so I've got this in order. So if I click up here, it will just sort it by spot, either ascending or descending. Each time you click on it, it swaps it between ascending and descending. So now I've got descending spot values. If I click it again, I've got an ascending uh, spot values. And there's loads we didn't we didn't patch when we we're doing this before, so that's why there's so many blanks. So it starts at one, which is my advanced truss. I'll explain why there's two in a minute. Uh, I will select all of these, do control C, and now go across oh, up here to my channel and type in control V and just copy all of those channel addresses across. So it should be like 144 is 144, yeah, number eight is number eight. Uh, the reason I do that, if you remember from the previous lesson, I explained that the, um, the channel number when you're using quick tools goes up in increments of the DMX address. So in the case of a V1000, that's 27. So you end up having 1, 28, 55, 88, whatever it is. So you, um, that's not very helpful as a channel number, but spots go up in orders of one or increments of one. So I always create the spots first and then just copy across to create the channels because channels is how we all think. Editing DMX addresses is, is kind of the same. Um, we can just enter numbers. So all these say 1.0 because I signed them to be universe uh, to be universe one, but I haven't actually addressed them yet. So they're at 1.0. That's a 1.29. The reason that I've got ones is that I um, I don't like this DMX D DMX A business. It's too much too much faff. I just want to see 1.1, 1.2, 3.1, 3.2, etc. So I've already created universes one, two, and three. So I can edit any of these by typing in 1.1, and that's now addressed to universe one address one. Um, 2.1, 3.1, just put those in three separate universes. Now, I've already created those universes, so that's why that works. If I want to create a universe that doesn't exist, if you remember, we didn't have a universe 4, so let's create a 4.1. Ah, so now it's like saying you're trying to create a new universe. To create a new one, you can either choose one from a list that you've already got, or you can create a new one, give it an ID, and you, and you can call this anything. Let's call it eggs. You know, we don't really want to do that because that means you've got to type in eggs every time. It's four. Universe four offset one is WYSIWYG speak for address. Don't ask me why. Um, we click OK and it's now created a new, a new universe. If we go into our, our patch menu, 
and then we now have a universe four and there is one fixture on it so that's another way of creating universes uh, the same dialog tool comes up when you are trying to patch to a universe using um, quick tools as well it will uh, ask you for um, to confirm that, that that new universe name now it's up to you you can type in i've seen some people write in you know u1 dot one and that becomes you know the new name is u1 and dot one so you just click okay that's fine too i've seen some people do oh universe one dot one and there we go now we've got oh, i spelled it wrong but universe one address one um that's really frustrating imagine having to go down that list like what, what i can do right now is i can literally go 1.3 enter one point 1.4 enter, 1.5 enter, 1.6 enter, 1.7 enter. So I'm keep missing my keyboard because I've got the microphone cable dragging across my keypad. But you get the idea, that's really quick, as opposed to having to type in universe 1.1. How frustrating. So when you're working on a large number of uh, fixtures, I just think just having a nice simple um, universe naming system saves you loads of time. And it's really clear anyway. Uh, the reason I would enter my patch this way rather than using quick tools is that I would usually get given uh, a patch sheet from a production electrician or uh, or from the board up and I'd have it on another screen I'd literally look at uh, if I go down here I've got my channel numbers I'd see right so channel 32 1.181 channel 33 is 1.195 and just read it off of the list or have someone read it to me if I'm working at home I'll get my wife to come and just read it out to me one one line at a time for about 500 600 fixtures fixtures takes about 15 20 minutes it's not a big deal and i actually find it more accurate doing it that way because you know you're not missing anything you're working down it in order um, you can see the numbers going in as you're typing them you're not having to go back in and check it again later and if something's wrong it'll pop up quickly in the error messages if it's a clash um, the most common thing i find myself doing is i might go 1.290 rather than 209 that tends to be where the mistakes come it's just just missing a uh uh, a number on the keypad or getting them back to front that they're, they're the sort of most common sort of uh, errors that I'd, I'd get with this process and that's just a case of when you do a flash through you can you can see it, um, it you, you turn the lights on the lighting desk and you can see that something's not working you come in and you see 1.2.209 and you look at your patch sheet and it says 1.290 it's really quick and easy you can troubleshoot it very fast let's just come back across here so let's just carry on these Mac TW1s as an example and I've got some uh, some other generic fixtures. I've got some source falls down here as well. So let's have a look at all of these. So we can change the hanging um, position for my lights. So these are on LX1, but we could change it. But it will unhang the fixture because we're actually taking it off of the bar by doing that. Um, we then have to go back into our flight case where the lights ended up and put it back onto LX3. So ideally, we don't do that. Um, we have the unit number. The unit number is the order that that light is on the bar. So if it's on its own on the bar, it'd be unit one. Uh, if it's the tenth lamp along to the to the to the left, uh, it start, the numbering starts from the right. Um, then it would you know, be unit ten. Gives you the manufacturer type. You can again you can try and swap this if you want, but it will give you some some error messages. Not ideal really. Swap the back. Um, that's the same as using a swap fixture tool, which I'll I'll show you later because that's quite handy. Uh, we can choose our lens types. Now the advantage of working in this method is that we can just literally um, go down and change all these one at a time. We can see very clearly which ones have been changed, which ones haven't. We can also, if I select this and do Control C, we can just go down and Control V, Control V. Oh no, it's not that we do that there. It works later on color gels, I promise, but it doesn't work there. So yeah, you can just go down very quickly and change all these to wide. Or maybe it's because I was trying to assign it to the wrong light. Let's try putting it onto TW1. There we go, it does work. It's because I was trying to assign a TW1 lens to a Mac 500. So just Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V. So yeah, really quickly change all of our lens types. Much quicker than doing it one at a time in the properties menu, but also not as quick as doing it this way. We could just grab all of these lights by clicking and dragging on the window down the side. I'll perhaps make it Mac 500s. And then right click somewhere and you can go to the properties and you can edit all those fixtures on mass you can do this for individual fixtures or group fixtures go into control we can change universe all at once options we've got the mode the gobo the effects um, even the prism uh, and where's the lens general lens here we go change the lens to standard update there we go put some more back so 
like I said at the very beginning of this series, there's three or four different ways of doing everything. I quite like doing it here myself. I like the tabulated Excel way of working. I can see what's going on. I can work through groups of lights in one go. Depends how you channeled it, of course. Um, but if you're working on a maybe a smaller lighting rig with lots of individual lights doing independent work, you might prefer to have um, these sort of changes made in the CAD view where you can see what's going on. Let's keep going. Colors. So if we select this little drop down here, it will show us the colors we've already choose, uh, chosen from our uh, quick reference bar here on the left when we're in CAD mode. So we already created Lee 202, if you remember, and Lee 205. So I can select that. Um, ooh, why don't we do that to a Mac 500, of course. I can't add a color to a Mac 500. I can do it. Oh, the source has got a scroller attached. So if I come down here, I can add a color to my scroller, Lee 202, and a scroller. Uh, let's find a, a source 4 that hasn't got anything on it. Here we go, level up here. So I can take a uh, source for pile, assign Lee 202 to it. I can also type in Lee 202 and it assigns a color. Um, I can do the same copy and paste tool, copy and paste. So it's very quick and easy to, um, to assign colors to a fixture. We've also got the same for accessories. We can add an accessory if it exists already in our uh, Quick Tools library. We can add it here, and we can also add um, the Pick from Library tool. So we can actually then go through and select it from the library like we would in the CAD mode. We'll keep going across. Um, I'm going to come back to circuit names, numbers, and focuses. We'll do that in a sec. Uh, everything else in here is sort of irrelevant. Um, you can, you know, if you wanted to, change the lamp types. You can. Uh, you can't change the mode in here, but you can select the lights, go to properties and change the modes. But it's a good way of seeing what's what's laid out, uh, you know, what, what you've chosen already. We've got the tilt, uh, pan, tilt and spin of the fixture. So if you want to spin it on the bar, we could, oh, can we change it? Yeah, so we can change the spin on the bar. Um, this is you know, not as useful as doing it in CAD mode because you can't just see what's going on. But maybe you want to do a load of fixtures at once, you can have a go at changing it. I would say that this XYZ and pan tilt and spin uh, data could be really useful um, for replicating your lights in another 3D visualizer. So the times I've used this uh, is when a grand MA operator wanted to use MA3D because they wanted to use the, the features and, that come with MA3D, such as being able to select a, a fixture, being able to do XYZ um, positioning. But they wanted to have the visual fidelity of WYSIWYG as a visualizer. So I would just copy and paste all of this data across and their 3D operator was just copying all of this data. Um, so you know, it's a MAC TW1 at minus 11.01 meters. Its uh, channel is you know 32 and its address is this. So all that data came across. Uh, the weight is inputted by WYSIWYG. It's in the library, so it's default. We, can we change it? No, we can't change it. So this is really helpful for uh, when we get to presentation mode, it can calculate the weight loadings on the bar based on this weight. And then there's some other just little random bits of data, like how many uh, how many data channels a fixture has. So whatever this is, I've lost it now, what fixture it is, but it's 35, TW1, 20. Um, oh, there you go, it says it here, what the model is, MAC TW1, uh, whether it's hung or unhung. So unhung means it's in the flight case. Layer it's on and the manufacturer. So have a good look at all of those. Now what I wanted to show you, if we come right back over here. First of all, we've got the purpose. Purpose is really handy just to give you some notes, what the light's meant to be doing. Um, it's I'd usually put in there what its focus is going to be because when, when I print my paperwork off, I can say that you know, channel, whatever this is, where are we? I haven't got a channel number, but whatever it is, this is going to be, boom, downstage left, um, cut off pros, for instance. So it's clear what that, that light's trying to do, what its job is. I might write in you know, uh, special downstage right um, chair. Just so there's some really clear instructions. It's really the only place where you can put in notes for your uh, your fixtures individually. Um, we went through spots before, but just explain dimmers. Uh, they don't really have a bearing on, um, on how the fixture turns on and off in the way it does in real life. Where it becomes useful to have, well, spot, we can largely ignore spot, except for that we need it to channel our fixtures up, but it doesn't really ever come up again. Um, channel is obviously what we call up in the lighting desk. The dimmer is what's 
you know, actually operating in the venue, what's what what uh, physical copper relay is turning on. Um, we then have over here circuit name and circuit number, and you can see uh, something else I've left in from my previous lessons. Um, but we can have a go at naming these for Socapexes. This is what I think is really useful. Now, at the Opera House, all of these have different numbers. I could have, um, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but you know, channel 161 is plugged into dimmer um, 32, which is uh, got an address of universe 16, uh, channel 372. It's, yeah, everything was different. Um, so this, this table is really useful. You know, every single thing was, was occupied by some sort of data that gave a reference to where that fixture is and, and what lines of power or communication have been used to control it. Um, when I'm doing my own things, I find that just putting in the Socapex details can be quite useful. So I will start off by naming it. I might just call it 1, 1.1. 1 .1. So that's be Soccer 1, uh, line 1. Or I'll write in Soccer 1 because you can write anything you want here. Um, circuit number can be anything as long as it's a number. Oh, no, it's not that high. Um, so that's Circuit 500. So that can fit your system however you want it to work. But the thing I find it most useful for is just detailing the Socapexes. So you can filter this data later on so that you can have your, you know, your patch bay information ready. You can say, all right, so when Socapex 1 comes in, circuit 1 on Socapex 1 will go into dimmer 23. And that is going to be patched to uh, universe 14 because your dimmers may be addressed in a weird way. And that will end up being channel 151. Just making that up again but you get the idea so all that data is in there um right that is uh all i was going to show you about the editing fixtures and data mode it actually it covers all the data mode really there's nothing more i wanted to show you um it's just about using it like an excel spreadsheet it's just a fantastic way to uh, to control and edit your fixtures it's just frustrating that you have to flip between cad and data to access it but you know you've got h select and v select you can um, you can actually work in the CAD mode with, with the spot screen uh, opened up. If I go right click, open the pop-up frame, I can drag this onto a different window and work in CAD mode and still have access to all that data and edit it as I'm working. So it's um, it's just a great way to be able to uh, edit as you're going or just making sure everything's tidy and clean. And I will never send a production off for, to, you know, for someone else to use until I've really thoroughly checked in here and gone down line by line, just make sure everything's in order and it's all organised. Everything's got a name, everything's... Uh, on the correct hanging structure um, and the position just make sure that your file is really neat because that makes you like a better um, and more efficient and diligent WYSIWYG operator so that's the end of chapter six and chapter seven we're going to look at um, sorry the end of chapter five rather in chapter six we're going to look at design mode and we can start seeing what it looks like to to create some um, uh, some looks see you there